I think my picking technique is correct. I currently pick consistently well at 105, 105 beats per minute. How many hours is this really going to take for me to reach 180 beats per minute playing 16 points? So at 16ths, we're at 105. And we want to get to, what did I say, 180? 180. That's pretty quick, 180. 16 counts, that's nothing moving along. How many notes is that a minute? Okay, that's pretty quick. Pretty quick. So how are we going to get that from 105 to 180? Well, first of all, it's difficult to answer the question not knowing what the specific problems are, why we're only at 105. Are we only at 105 because we haven't been playing guitar for a very long time? Are we at 105 because we're, we're using wrong techniques? Are we, using, are we at 105 because we're using the right technique but we haven't put in the time to practice it? Are we at 105 because we've got the right techniques but we're, doing, we're implementing it in an inefficient way? Are we at 105 because we've got a problem and we don't isolate problems? We try and practice everything in a full context. There are lots of things that could prevent a player who's not beginner or intermediate and is advanced, generally speaking, in other areas, but is stuck back here in something <coughs> technical. Okay. So the first thing we're going to, as a teacher, the first thing I'm going to look at is do we have the right technique? Okay. Do we have an efficient hand position? Are we tense in our arm, shoulder, wrist, hands? Okay. What are the con in other words, what are the conditions? What is the environment like? Posture, hand position of the two hands, how one hold is holding the pick. All the things that matter before you even start playing a single note. Okay, those are conditions. What is the environment? Do we have the right environment before we play a single note? Okay? So that's what I would look at first. Environment. What kind of picks do we have? Are we using a metal pick? Are we using a thin pick? Is the action on the guitar two feet away from the fretboard? What is what are the conditions? After that, then I want to know, are you using the right technique or the best technique that you could be using? So are you picking that scale with all downstrokes? Or are you using alternate picking? Alternate picking is a whole lot better than all downstrokes. Are you using directional picking? Directional picking is better than alternate picking. And we can prove that it is so. So if we move to a more efficient more effective technique, assuming all other things are the same, the speed and the skill level is going to come up. Okay? It's not going to come up the same day because if you've been doing alternate picking or all downstrokes all your life and now someone throws at you a brand new technique, it's going to take time to become familiar and fluent with that new technique. But once it does, you're going to be cleaner, you're going to be faster, you're going to make less errors. Okay? So it's an analysis of what the techniques are. Once we've got that in place, then it becomes a matter of how do you practice? Not just how long you practice, how, what do you actually do when, when you practice? What are you practicing for? Are you practicing just to wiggle your fingers as fast as you can and just work on the maximum speed? Or are you practicing to, make, uh, to, to stop unwanted string noise and make everything clean? Are you practicing to get the two hands to feel in sync? Are you practicing to apply the skills that you have, or integrate the skills that you have, or become consistent with the skills that you have? Right? So we talked before, and when speaking just about speed, which this, that's what this relates to, okay? you've got these different areas of speed. You've got maximum speed, the speed at which you can literally pick and move your fingers regardless of whether it's clean or in sync or sloppy or whatever, just balls out maximum potential speed. That's going to be a number, right? You're going to have a number here for how fast you can play something. Okay? 
Maybe it's 200. I don't know. Some number. Okay, let's say it's 200. Then here, remember what the next element was in order. Do you remember? What was the next thing that I listed? Clean speed. Is that next? Okay. So clean, so this essentially is, let's call it. So now it's how fast can you play that item and not have unwanted string noise and fret buzz happen. It's not the same as playing totally accurately with you with the answer in sync. It's just about not having excess noises happening. Okay? We'll talk about here the uh, making everything perfect in sync in a bit. So you got clean. So let's say that this now is only 180. Okay, what's next on the list? Okay, so how do we define accurate speed? Let's call it two-hand synchronization, okay? Two-hand sync, okay? That's the speed at which the teeth of the gears mesh and don't crash into each other. So when you play a note, the left hand finger and the pick are tick work together at exactly the same time and the notes are clearly heard and they're not being choked by the pick attacking the string before the finger got there, or vice versa. The string is ringing out, or the note's ringing out for its full duration. We haven't picked up our finger, taken the finger off too early. We haven't started picking the next note too early. Okay, things are in sync. So this is gonna drag this 180 down, because when we do this, we're assuming that it's still clean. Okay, we're still using the other extra string notes. Now, this might come down to 145, maybe. Just Throwing out this arbitrary number. What's next? What was the next item? Consistency. Is that next? Consistency. Okay. I think I spelled that right. What speed can you do all that stuff consistently? Nine times out of ten, when you play it, it's perfect. It's still clean, it's still in sync. At what speed is that gonna happen now? It's going to be less than 145, so maybe it's 130. What's next? Performance. Performance, yeah. So at what speed can you actually perform this? Stand up, play it in front of people, and not make mistakes. Well, that number's going to be nothing less than 130, because you can get 130 at home Right? But in a real life situation, that number's probably going to come down. Okay, So maybe now, you're only at 115, or maybe even lower, maybe it's 100. Okay. So our goal here is not necessarily to increase this. So if your total max out, balls out speed, not in sync, it's sloppy, it's 200, don't sit there and try and make it 210 or 220 or 250, right? Because these won't necessarily, those speeds won't necessarily come up even when this comes up. It might come up slightly, but it won't directly close the gaps that need to be closed between these different areas. We want to close this gap and close this gap and this one and this one. Okay, so it's here, and here, and here, and here, that really matter. Making that distance smaller, okay? So if we're practicing, when he says he's at 105 and he wants to get like 180, we don't even know what that even means. What's at 105? This, or this, or one of those? We don't even know yet. So essentially, we need to work on, for sure, we need to work on two and three. And if we're ever going to be, make this reliable, number four. We may or may not have to worry about five, depending upon if the student's goal is to really perform. If it's not, then we don't care about that so much. If it is, well, then we've got to work on number five, too, and we can start working on it right now. We would work on all of these. So some of the practice time would be based on this. Some would be here, some would be here, and some might be here. We need to work on that. 
No. Because guess what happens when these gaps close and the, those speeds get pushed up? This goes up all by itself. Right? If you can consistently play clean with perfect synchronization at 180, that's a short distance between 180 and 200. This 200 is now going to go to 230, 240, 250. Okay? It's going to happen by itself. And it's going to push this up. It's going to have a much bigger effect than if we try and focus here, push this up, and then think that, oh, these things will come up as this comes up. It might come up slightly, but not much. So this is the meat of what we want to do, and this is the bonus that the student wants to perform. Even if we don't work on this, if they can consistently play this item instead of 130 at 175, this is going to come up too. From 115 to maybe 145, 150. Make sense? So those are the types of things that I would think about as a student and what you need to think about with how you're going to approach this as a, just a general idea of 105 to 180. Okay? There are more elements, but in a nutshell, that's where to start.